Hey, and welcome back to Smoker Ribs. It is one hot day in South Mississippi. I'm not sure about the temperature, but it's somewhere around 100. That's what it feels like. I'm going to be doing some pulled beef today on the Kamado Joe. We're going to be doing some barbecue pulled beef sandwiches or barbecue beef sandwiches. And I'm going to be using uh, barbecue sauce that was sent to me by Lloyd Coakley up there in uh, Belleville, Illinois. I actually lived in Belleville for about eight months right after Katrina got displaced up there. Real nice area. So we're going to give that a try for the first time. And um, hey, let's get busy. All right, so this is going to be a low and slow cook. So I went ahead and filled the fire box completely up to the top with some oak lump charcoal. And on top of that, I got three chunks of hickory wood for smoke. Hickory and beef go together very well. I just lit this thing up. We're going to let it go here for about a good 10 minutes. I'm going to put the deflector plate in. And meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and rub down this uh, chuck roast that I got. Be right back. All right, first thing I'm going to do is take some peanut oil. I'm going to rub this roast down with this peanut oil. Alright, now I'm going to add some salt and pepper on both sides. Alright, I did not add the salt and the pepper to my rub purposely because after this is pulled, I'm going to add a little bit more salt and pepper and a little bit more of that seasoning separately as well. Alright, now I'm going to have in the description box exactly how I made this rub. I'm going to go ahead and list the ingredients here on the screen as well if you'd like to pause this and you could write it down. And if I could keep the cotton picking flies away from my meat here. Put a good liberal coat on this. Make sure you get the sides and the bottom. Now you do want to reserve some of this rub for after it's pulled like I said earlier. Not going to require a lot. Alright, I just placed my roast on here. This is a chuck roast. Full of flavor. Really good stuff. Alright, now I've got it smoking in hickory wood as I showed you earlier. I'm going to do about a three hour smoke on this. That should be plenty without overpowering it with a, uh, you know, too, too much smoke. That should be just about right. At the end of three hours, I'm going to be putting a wrap on this. I'm going to level my Kamado out around 250 degrees. Alright, let's get started. All right, as you can see right here, I've got 255 degrees. That's where I've leveled out. It'll fluctuate a little bit somewhere in there. The whole object of this, why the meat is still raw, is to pour just as much smoke as you can within the first few hours. So after about two hours, the smoke should be leveling out somewhat. I've got the three hickory chunks in there. I'm getting a light blue smoke out of the top of it. It's smoking just right. And at that point, like I said, I'm going to foil it. Actually, I'm going to put it in a foil pan with some other juices. We're going to cover it, and we'll let it finish in that till it gets completely pulled or pulled beef tender. And uh, I'll bring you back at that point. All right, after I was one hour into the cook, I went ahead and stuck some probes in this. And what I'm shooting for is 140 degrees, and I've just reached that. So what I'm going to do at this point is go ahead and remove these probes. I'm going to transfer this over into a aluminum foil pan. Alright, so what we're going to do at this point is I'm going to pour a Coca-Cola into the bottom of this pan. I'm going to take pure maple syrup. I'm going to pour this over the top. Now, I'm going to insert these probes back into this meat. I'm 
I'm going to cover it with foil. We're going back onto the Kamado. We're going to keep it at around 250 degrees and we're going to cook until this reaches an internal temperature of about 215 degrees. All right, I'm up to 210 degrees. Now, without relying on a thermometer completely, I'm going to give it this check right here to see how we're looking. And that is simply a skewer with a point on it. All right, I still feel some resistance in there. So we're going to, we're going to let it go ahead and go on up to 215 like I first said. All right, now according to my app on my iPhone, this eye grill is sitting at 211 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and pull this and set it over here and just let it chill out. Or actually, I'm going to let it raise in temperature a little bit more. And that's exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to take it and set it right over here. All right, go away fly. My goodness, that's the only problem with summertime. I love the weather other than the extreme heat, but these flies, man, they just aggravate the heck out of me. All right, so we're just gonna let this sit here and rest for about 30 minutes, and it should peg out at its 215 degree target. If not, I know we're good to go regardless. But re like I said, you gotta let this set and rest. You do not want to, uh, start pulling this meat if it's too hot it will dry out all right let's take a look in here and see what we got i've been letting this rest for around 30 minutes keep in mind this started off as like a little four pound chuck roast not a whole lot to it to begin with it has shrunk up shrunk up some let's remove our probes now let's give it the old timey test here. This is the telltale right here. Oh yeah, look at there. Going right through it. Just like butter. Now that's what you want. See that? No resistance whatsoever. All right, we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I got a bowl here. I'm gonna pour these renderings into this bowl. I'm gonna set it in the freezer and let it chill down real quick to where all the fat comes to the top to where I can skim that off. I'm gonna get rid of the fat and meantime I'm gonna uh, shred this this beef and I'm gonna pour the juice back on top. We'll be back. Alright I have taken two forks and I have shredded this meat up and I have fought with flies like you would not believe I'm trying to keep them off of this meat. I tell you what this stuff, I was going to pour some of the renderings back into this. It's not even needed. Look at that. This stuff is so moist and juicy. Thanks to that Kamado. That's, that's the advantage of a Kamado over most of your other grills. Mm. Oh my God. That is good old Southern barbecue right there. That hickory did his number on it. All right. What I'm going to do at this point, and I'm not going to do much because it really don't need it. I'm just going to lightly salt this. Just a little. Add a little bit more black pepper into this. That hickory has seasoned this, this meat so well and the rub that I put on top, I'm not even adding more of that. I don't wanna, I don't wanna run it. The taste is phenomenal just like it is. All right, what, what I am gonna do Just take this Coakley's barbecue sauce. Okay, I haven't even tried it yet. We're gonna start mixing that into the meat. We'll stir that in good. We wanna coat this meat really well with it. I tell you what, 215 degrees is perfect. Perfect for this. You've seen the uh, toothpick test, how it just went right through it like butter. That's what you want on any meat that you're going to pull. We're going to mix this in. Now what I'm going to do to finish this up is once I, once I get all this barbecue mixed in good, the sauce, I'm going to put it back on the Kamado just for a few minutes to heat everything back up thoroughly. 
I'm gonna go inside we're gonna toast some buns now there's a hunk of fat right there that I'm gonna get rid of nobody likes biting into that I say just a little bit more okay I've just about used that entire jar of Coakley's but that's all right this one be well worth it I guess house flies are just about anywhere you go but they're real prevalent down here in the south during the summer months and that's just one thing I always dread especially making these videos because there ain't no way to get them out of your video but you can be rest sure one thing they ain't gonna get in my food all right this is going right back onto the Kamado I'm gonna let it sit on there maybe 10-15 minutes all right if I can possibly put this sandwich together without flies eating it before I can get to it these flies are terrible today I don't know what's up with that but I'm gonna take some of this beef I'm gonna put it on this sandwich then I'm going to cover it back up. I'm going to take it inside so the little rascals can't get a chance at it. Alright, that should be plenty to do a taste test with. Let's give this a taste. Here we go. Ah, this is going to be incredible. I already know it. You know why I know it? Because I already tasted it. Mmm. Mm. Mm. I tell you what Lloyd that barbecue sauce is money brother that is so good on this beef my lord it reminds me of the like I said earlier the little roadside barbecue places coming up here in South Mississippi we used to pull over that was the best finest barbecue and it stuck in my mind ever since I was just a child. And I really nailed it on this. Between the hickory wood smoke going into this uh, chuck roast, which chuck is already full of flavor. In my opinion, that is the best cut to do, like pulled beef with. And that barbecue sauce just rocked it. Until next time, smoke your ribs. <laughs>